Hey everybody, it's Mark Vo with Voland Outdoors. I'm up to 900 subscribers just in the last month. And one of them was talking to me, was leaving a comment a couple of days ago saying, what's this sight picture when you anchor and look down the left edge of the bowstring with your dominant eye, when you look down this edge of the bowstring over the top of the arrow and you talk about lining up the tip of the arrow with the center of the target, what does that really look like? Roll them! I've tried on previous videos to show what that looks like and it is difficult because you've got to put in, you've literally got to put some kind of a bar in to, to hold the bow at full draw so you can try to adjust it. Well today we're going to try one more time and see if I can give you, the conditions are perfect lighting wise so I can give you guys an idea of what the sight picture really looks like when you're anchored with a three finger gap with a three finger gap, two and a half finger gap, two finger gap, one and a half finger gap, one finger gap, half of a finger gap. So you get an idea of what the sight picture actually looks like looking down the left edge of the bowstring and putting the tip of the arrow on the target. Let me get set up. We're gonna put a bar in the, my daughter's bow. I don't wanna hold a 60 pound bow at full draw for minutes at a time. That's not good for the limbs. Put a 20 pound limb, yeah, I can do that. Let's get set up and I'll see you in a second. Boy, did this take some work, guys. But you are seeing now the left edge of the bowstring right here in perfect alignment with the arrow tip. So right this left edge of the bowstring is looking over the arrow shaft, putting the tip of the arrow right smack on the center of the yellow, the center of the bullseye. Not above it, not below it, not left, not right, directly on it. And that's what the sight picture would look like if you were actually shooting a three finger gap. That the gap that you see here is about three fingers. So that would be a 20 meter shot. That's what I've been trying to tell you. That this left edge right here becomes your rear sight. And it's nearly exactly over the top of the arrow shaft. It's off by the ha like literally a half of a bowstring width. So one millimeter. It's as accurate as you're going to get shooting variable. That the left edge of the bowstring becomes your rear sight. You're looking straight over the shaft. You can see the tip of the arrow that you can actually put it right smack on the center of that target. That's what your shot picture looks like. That's what your sight picture looks like. Let's adjust this gap now and see what happens when you start shooting at longer distances like 30, 40, and 50. As you see this gap get smaller and smaller and smaller, it means that the back of the arrow is getting closer and closer and closer to your chin as you make a shot. And what you'll see is that you expose more and more of the arrow. It starts to look, mm, let me get another arrow. As you start pulling the back of the arrow down for longer distances, you're simply going to see more and more and more of the arrow shaft like that. But at shorter distances, when the gap is big, that means the back end is coming up and you're looking down almost the whole shaft. Almost like you're looking through a tube is what it feels like sometimes, like you're looking through the shaft. But at longer distances, the back of the arrow comes down and you see more and more of the shaft. So let's go put it right out at 60. Let's get set up for a 60 yard target so you get an idea of what the extremes are. What are really, really short, what the string, what the sight picture looks like for a very large gap for a short distance, and then what it looks like for a very long distance. Let's try again. Here's what the shot looks like at 60, meet, at 60 yards. The target is way out there. I have a gap here of only one finger, which means now the back of the arrow is way down below your, way down, almost touching the bottom of your chin. And as you look down the left edge of the bowstring, over the shaft again, nothing has changed. As you put the tip of the arrow right smack on the target out there, the only thing that's changed is the elevation of the arrow, and that's why it looks like you can see more of the shaft. Because now that the 
back of the arrow is so much further down, closer to your chin, when you look over the edge of the bowstring, you simply see more of that arrow shaft. If I stand off to the side a little bit, but you're still looking, the, this left edge is literally splitting the yellow way down there. It's splitting the yellow of the target. And the very tip of this arrow is right smack on the dead center of that yellow. Not above it, not below it, not left, not right. It's dead center. This point right there is right smack on the center of that target so that your arrow is perfectly in line with your line of sight, which is the left edge of the bowstring, the tip of the arrow. They're not out of whack like you would if you were anchoring at your cheek. If you want to see what this looks like slide off to the side, it looks like that. You see how much more the arrow is actually tilted up? You don't see this, you see something that looks more like this. That's what you see. And then the target is way down there. Let's see if I can focus on the target for a second. Hard to do both guys. That is what the sight picture, that is what the sight picture looks like for Olympic recurve archers and for bearable archers that are using the Voltland string walking method, the Voltland shooting method to anchor under their chin, just like Olympic archers. You see the same sight picture because you're looking down the left edge of the bowstring, putting the tip of the, tar tip of the arrow right smack on the target. So you're looking straight down the arrow shaft, right about there. And then a small motion release with this hand, small motion release. And that means the arrow, the bowstring doesn't go to the left. It doesn't go to the right. It goes straight towards the target because it's pulling straight back away from the target. It's heading straight towards the target and that means the arrow is going straight towards the target and you don't have any left to right error deliberately introduced by your release. This is Marfo with Voland Outdoors. <laughs> Risking life and limb on a throwaway bow to try to help you guys understand what the sight picture looks like for Olympic recurve archery and for bare bow archery where you're anchoring under your chin like with the Voltland shooting method. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. For the guy that asked this question, fantastic question. Keep them coming. I hope this helps. Please let me know in the comments. We'll see you guys out there. Cut. Let's shoot a little bit at 20 meters and you guys at 20, 20 yards, close enough, uh, 18 meters. And I want you guys to try to imagine that my dominant eye My face is looking this way, you're the target. My dominant, I'm anchoring under my chin so I'm able to look right down the left edge of the bowstring with that dominant eye looking over the bridge of my nose and I'm putting the tip of my arrow gonna look a lot like this. I'm gonna put the tip of my arrow right smack on the target. That's what it's gonna look like. Let's see. Step one, choose your gap, three fingers. Step two, anchor under your... There's a kid that is screaming his lungs out behind me and new parents that have not reached that point where they realize there's a need for corporal punishment and training. Simple as that. I've never seen a kid own parents like this little kid is. Good luck. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back and anchor under your chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. That's your rear sight. Step four, put the tip of the arrow on the center of that gold. That's your front sight. Step five, small motion release. Really hard to talk and shoot at the same time. You guys know that when you're talking, you're moving the back of the arrow around. Let me try to be quiet this time. You know the five steps. One, choose your gap. Two, anchor under your chin. Three, 
Look down the left edge of the bowstring. Four, tip of the arrow on the center of the target. Five, small motion, release. Very small motion. Caught the yellow. Three o'clock yellow. Did you guys hear that kid? He's like a feral child that they found in the wilderness. They're just trying to hug him through it. I gotta cut all this out. This has to be in the outtakes. But... That was three out of four in the gold. Why did I have such good left to right? Such low left to right, such small? Why did I have such small left to right error? Because I made a small motion release and because I was looking straight down the arrow shaft, not tipping the arrow off to this side while I'm looking this way. I'm bringing the bowstring underneath my chin. So the only error, is it perfect? Well, it's not quite perfect. It's the half the width of a bowstring shifted off to the side. That's the only error. That's a pretty small error in a bare bow method, especially compared to Let me just grab an arrow that's just sitting here to show you guys. What I want you guys to understand is this. At full draw, the arrow that I introduced by looking down the left edge of the bowstring is only about a half, only about a half of a bowstring width. But when I anchor at my cheek, look how much air I'm introducing. I'm not pointing at you anymore. I'm looking at you, but I'm pointing way over there somewhere. Do you get it? bringing that bowstring underneath your, bringing, bringing your anchor point under your chin lets you achieve that amazing alignment with the left edge of your bowstring, just like the Olympic recurve archers do. It's finally quiet, I'm gonna shoot a little bit. Ah, may as well come with me. Let's go see if they're in the gold or not. Yep, three in the gold, all at three o'clock. Did you see how little the error was there, guys? Actually, look right here. That's the left to right arrow. Yeah, I pulled it. I pulled it from here to here, but look, with my small motion release, look at the arrows amongst themselves. There's not even a, there's not even a half of an inch of difference there in the left and right to where they were landing. Even the stray one is still only about an inch away from the others. Pretty amazing. I didn't invent that. That's the Olympic recurve archers. They're the ones that have the secret. All right, let's cut and go film some more. We're gonna try something I've never tried before, magnifying while I'm filming instead of after filming. Let's see if we can get a slightly better, slightly better view of what's going on. I'll be blurry, I think. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, anchor under your chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the bowstring. That's your rear sight. Step four, put the tip of that arrow right smack on the center of that yellow. That's your front sight. Step five, Release. Bullseye, let's go see. Come on.
Everybody gives me, I, I get some people always giving me shit, saying, oh yeah, deadly accuracy. Because I'm sitting here trying to film and I'm nervous. I'm trying to film and shoot at the same time. But when I'm quiet, and I'm using a superior shooting method, look what the old guy can do. That ain't bad. Imagine what you young guys could do. Imagine you compound archers that have devoted so much time and money into perfecting that craft with that weapon called a compound bow. But imagine if you put a bear bow in your hands with this method. Imagine what's possible. Ha! Imagine what you could do. Last round and then we're done. Good alignment, they're, they're landing vertical, a little high, a little low, but the left to right is amazing. Let's go look in a second. Last one of the day. I gotta swing this around so you guys can see the feral child. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Here's what we got. And what I want you to see, oh, let's zo zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. There. And let's lower it. Hang on a second. I can't show you, I can't put the camera down low enough to look at it. Two out of four bullseyes, even under the dress, even shooting under, under live fire. But what I want you guys to see is this. I want you to see how small the air is. It's only about... Guys, for three of them, it's, it's plus or minus an inch. That's it. And there's one stray out here because the feral kids started screaming. You get the idea. Okay. Calling it a night. <laughs> Bye.